all of a sudden, it just went poof. Hey gang, Justin back with some more smoking hit film express goodness using some of the awesome stuff you can find at productioncrate.com. This uh, smoky title transition, I guess you could call it, was an interesting effect to create, but I warn you up front, it will definitely take some time. Start by making your text. Pretty simple stuff, I made mine big and fat, and I think this showcases the effect well, but the same basic approach should also work with thinner text. I chose to put my text into its own composite shot that I named Source, which I'll talk about more later. This was then dropped into a comp I called Main, which is where all the smoky magic came together on the Source layer. So let's take a look at the effects I added. First is Heat Distortion. For those who haven't messed with this effect yet, here's how it looks using its default settings. Obviously I wanted something slower and more spread out for my smoky look, so I made several changes. First I cranked up the scale to its maximum value of 1000, which made the softer patches really big. I also animated the distortion property from 0 to 50, so the distortion increased over time. In the animation category, I changed wind direction to 43, so the movement would be roughly up and to the right, reduced wind speed to 50 pixels per second, and dropped noise speed to 0.25. This gave me a nice slow drifting to the whole effect. Scrolling back up, you'll also notice that I've got something selected for the mask property. What mask allows you to do is use the alpha channel of another layer to control where and how strongly the heat distortion effect will be active. In this case, because I plan on using some production create smoke wisp assets to blow across the text from left to right, I wanted this effect to have a similar progression, with the left side showing the distortion first and then progressing to the right. To achieve this, I made this composite shot you see named Gradient. Opening it up and playing through it, it's just a plane with an animated black to white color gradient and the demult effect added, so the gradient affects the plane's alpha channel. I made two points to control the spread of the gradient, parented one point to the other, and animated the parent point to move the gradient. I placed these driving points pretty far apart to make the resulting wipe of the heat distortion effect more smooth. Going back to the main comp, you can see that without this gradient, the heat distortion effect looks drastically different. Now, before I go on to the next effect, I want to just quickly reiterate that it took a lot of trial and error to fine tune the settings for this effect and not just on its own, but also in terms of how it tied in with the other effects in the stack. When I built this setup, I didn't just add one effect, adjust its settings, and move on. I pretty much added all three at once, then spent many hours tweaking and playing to get the end result. While I'm showing a few specific settings for certain properties, just know that you might need something different in your situation. Also keep in mind that the timing of animated properties will also vary depending on your needs. In the end, be prepared to spend a good bit of time just playing, making RAM previews, and playing some more. The next effect in the stack is displacement. While there's already a lot of displacement going on thanks to the heat distortion effect, I wanted another subtle layer of displacement on top of it all. If you don't already know what displacement does, it uses another layer as a source to control the shifting of pixels in the current layer. In my case, I added a plane to the bottom of my layer stack, dropped the fractal noise effect onto it, and tweaked it to get some large soft patches of color. One important thing to note is that the direction of displacement is affected by the source's values. This is a slight oversimplification of the concept, but mid-gray is neutral and causes no displacement, with the values toward black or white causing a shift one way or the other. Because I only wanted to displace my text in one direction, up and to the right, I changed the black color in the fractal noise effect to mid-gray by setting red, green, and blue values to 128. Because displacement, like many other effects that use other layers as sources, reads the pre-effect values of the source layer, I dropped a gray layer above my fractal noise layer, hid both the noise and grade layers, and set the grade as my source in the displacement effect. I changed both horizontal and vertical displacement options to use the luminance of the source layer, then keyframed the max value properties for each, so the displacement increased over time. When combined with heat distortion, it adds just an extra touch of pseudo-random drift to the whole thing. The final effect in the stack is blur, which is simply animated to increase over time. Because some parts of the text still remain fairly sharp after heat distortion, this ensures that everything is very soft by the end of the transition. The last thing I did to my source comp was to keyframe its opacity, so the whole thing faded out slowly as all of these effects increased. With all that done, here's how it looks. 
Now it's time to add our smoke elements. On the Production Crate site, I grabbed three of the Wisp items from the Small Mist Accents page. Now even though two of them were on an angle, I knew it'd be easy to just rotate them later. Back in HitFilm Express, I dropped all three Wisps into a new composite shot, and because they're all pretty light, I added a grade layer above them, then added the fill color effect to the grade, leaving the color on white, and cranking the blend amount up to 100%. From there, it was just a matter of playing with position, rotation, and timing to get the look I wanted. Part of this experimentation also involved seeing how these elements worked with the other comp I had made. Initially, I just dropped this Wisps comp into that one, and once again, spent a good bit of time playing, even adjusting the earlier effects further to work better with the smoke elements. At the end of all that, I still wanted the smoke to have more punch, so I duplicated the layer. Once all that was done, it looked like this. There are some really nice moments where it feels like the smoke is actually part of the disintegrating text, but when I got to this point, I still felt like the text was too solid. My final experiment was to add yet another production crate element, which was this looping fog clip. I had a couple ideas for how to use it, so I duplicated my main comp twice and tried a different option in each. For the first one, I dropped the fog layer below the smoke wisps and set the blend mode for this fog layer to subtract. This helped to add some further smoky texture to the whole thing, so the larger dissipating blobs weren't so solid. I added opacity keyframes to this layer, going from 0 to 75%, which eased in the effect over time. Because it was pretty obvious that this was one texture subtracting from another, I also added a blur effect to smooth out the whole thing. And here's the result. I kind of liked it, but wanted to try one more option. The second test I did with this fog was a little more complex. After dropping in the fog footage below the wisps, I took the layers that comprised the main poof effect and made them into their own composite shot, which for some odd reason I named poof. I then duplicated this embedded comp, trimmed opposite ends of these layers, and used opacity keyframes on them to transition from one to the other. On the lower copy, the one that ends the shot, I added the set matte effect, with the fog layer as the source, matte source set to luminance, blend to subtract, and invert checked. If I hide the smoke wisps and the other poof layer, you can see that this took the fog effect and placed it in whatever space was created by the dissipating text. Combined with the wisps, this really sells the idea that the text isn't just blurring, but is breaking up like smoke. Of the two tests I did with the fog, I like this end result the best, so I added a simple fractal noise background for the final render, and there you have it. Oh, and uh, remember how I put the original text under its own composite shot? Well, this makes it really easy to replace the text with different text, or even an image, and all the effects get applied to that instead. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon so you're always notified of the latest crate goodness. Now, go out there and make it awesome.